Our God is still on his throne and ruling the affairs of man. Even as he does not change, his truths have not changed. Thankfully, God still has a people which proclaim that old-time religion, setting forth his sovereignty, and the old paths of truth where we can find rest for our souls. Welcome to Word of Sovereign Grace, a ministry of Paradise Primitive Baptist Church in Arlington, Texas. Get your Bible, call your friends, and sit back as we open the King James Scriptures to explore the glorious Word of Sovereign Grace. Here's this week's message. like every time that I start into a subject, I, sometimes I can't see where I want to go with it. But in that verse 4, he said, for if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law. This has been somewhat a uh, disagreement among some of us about when Christ became high priest. And yet I feel like that as I stand before you tonight that my belief is that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was a high priest in the covenant. He has always been a high priest. He was born a high priest, lived a high priest, died and rose a high priest. Carrying with it the thought that he is our mediator. our go-between between us and God. We find that Christ has always been. Didn't just begin an existence, but He has always been. To leave that for just a moment, I want to go to the first chapter of the Gospel of St. John then come back to this. In the first few verses, it said, In the beginning was the Word. 
we as Primitive Baptists have always believed that this word is needed with Christ. And we find that Christ here was in the beginning. He says it was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Not only was it in the beginning, but it was with God. I find it very hard to separate the God here. And yet we know that John said there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Can't get around that this Word in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. But he goes on and said, The same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by Him. Bring out to us that this crop, this one that was born of a virgin Mary, this one that had took up the fleshly nature, was in the beginning and took part in that great creation when God created the heavens and the earth. And said all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. It's hard for me to just comprehend sometimes the greatness of our God. Not only the greatness of God, but the greatness of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Then we find it said in him was life, and life was the light of me. Then verse 14. Said, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. I'm talking to you tonight about the Son of God, Jesus Christ. The one that was full of grace and truth. And I believe in grace tonight. And I believe that grace. Is what our belief is based upon. Based upon the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that He came to take away the sin of the world. We as Trinity Baptists have always believed in grace. And this is not just my subject tonight, but we believe that Brother Crane, that it was grace that elected us and placed us in Jesus Christ. We believe that it was Grace that not only elected you and placed you and preserved you and kept you by the fire of God, but it's grace that predetermined your home in heaven. Not only was it grace that predetermined your place in heaven, but it's grace that quickened you into divine life that you might live forevermore. Jesus said, because I live, ye shall live also. Not only do we believe that that was grace, but we believe that our personal being here in this life is all helped up by the grace of an all-loving God that loved you and chose you and placed you in Christ. It was love. It was grace. So we find now that it was grace that Christ came and born of a Virgin Mary. But it says... And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld His glory, the glory of the only fountain of the Father, full of grace and truth. When we begin to think about the grace of an almighty God, then we begin to think that what about our high priest, which is also Jesus Christ? And what do we do with the Scripture over there? If He were on earth, He should not be a priest. You know, there are different thoughts on when Christ become a priest. But tonight, I believe he's always been a priest. I believe that he was born a priest, that he lived a priest, and all the time that he lived upon the face of the earth, he acted as your mediator and my mediator, that he prayed to God time and time again on our behalf. Then we read in verse 16, 
And of His fullness have we all received grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth by Jesus Christ. Now, only to establish that our Lord in Christ was in the beginning, that He always has been, that He has always been, and always will be. Now I want to go back to Hebrews. And I want to back up to the second chapter. Start with about verse 11. He said, For both He that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one. For which cause He is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. When we begin to look at the church of God, I believe it goes a little deeper than sometimes we look at just the surface of it. And sometimes we see only the visible phase or the militant phase of the church. But I want to tell you tonight it goes a lot deeper than just the visible phase. It embraces the whole elect family of God. One that was chosen out and placed in Christ. But he said, In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children with God hath given me. For it is much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood. I want you to see now what we are partakers of. It said we are partakers of flesh and blood. He also himself likewise took part of the same. I want you to be able to see tonight that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, uh, He was not only God, my friend, uh, but He was God uh, manifested in the flesh. Uh, he took part of flesh and blood. And notice what He says in that. He said that through death He might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to the bondage for verily he took not on him the nature of angels. Aren't you glad of that tonight? That he took not on himself the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Uh, do you realize what he talked about when he brought out the seed of Abraham to you? Uh, we find uh, that this covenant was made uh, before the world ever begun, my friend. Uh, but I want to tell you, he also made this covenant uh, uh, with Abraham. Uh, and he renewed it again uh, through Isaac uh, and renewed it again uh, uh, through Jacob. Uh, and this seed under consideration uh, we read in one place, uh, not seeds uh, as full, but seeds as one, which is Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, pointing toward the time, my friend, uh, that our Lord uh, was going to come. Uh, but he said, and deliver them uh, who through their fear of death for all their lifetime subject to bondage. Uh, for verily he took on him not the nature of angels, uh, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Uh, wherefore in all things uh, it behooved him. Uh, you know, several years ago, uh, I used to have a man that would come to me at work, uh, and he said, it behooves us uh, to do this, uh, or it behooves us to do that. And I wonder, uh, I wonder what he's talking about. Uh, but you know, uh, as we study God's Word here, uh, it's talking about there's a must uh, that he do this, Brother Crane. Uh, we, uh, he must do something. Something. He said, Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest. Brethren, had he become a faithful high priest, first he had been made like unto his brethren. Faithful and high priest. But he said, In all things pertain to God to make reconciliation for the sins of of the people. If I was to ask you tonight, when was you reconciled to God? And when did Christ reconcile you to Him? And when did He reconcile you to God? I'm going to tell you that took place upon the cross of Calvary when He was the priest of the Most High God. But He was also the sacrifice. I want you to see tonight that He was not only priest, but He was the offering. He was the sacrifice. But he goes on in this. He said, For that he himself has suffered, being tempted, he is able to suffer them that are tempted. Now notice chapter 3. 
He said, wherefore, holy brethren. Have you ever wondered why the Apostle Paul points this out? Wherefore, holy brethren. Did you know tonight that there is a sense that you are holy through the shed blood and redemptive work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But he said, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. He's telling us to consider some of these things. And then he said, who was faithful to him that appointed him, and also Moses was faithful in all his house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who had built a house had more honor than the house. For every house is built by some man, but he that built all things is God. Have you ever wondered uh, uh, why Christ uh, didn't go into these tabernacles uh, and he would offer up the blood of bulls and goats uh, for an offering for sin? This is what they've done under the old law, my friend. Uh, they would go into this tabernacle uh, and they would offer these things up uh, and the priest would go in first uh, and he would offer it up uh, for, the sac uh, for the sins of himself. Uh, then he would come out and go back again and offer it up for the sins uh, of the people. But I want to tell you tonight that our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ, He didn't have to go into a man-made temple. He was the tabernacle, my friends. And He says, For every house is built by some man, but he that built all things is God. Now we have Christ. Not only is He Jesus Christ, uh, not only was He the beginning, but we find that He took up the nature of us, uh, or he took up uh, flesh and blood, my friend, and he came into the world. But he wasn't just any man. Uh, he was God uh, manifested in the flesh. He was without sin. And not only, my friend, was he our high priest, uh, our king, uh, our peace, my friend, but I want to tell you tonight, he was more than that. Uh, he was the tabernacle himself. And he says, and Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house we are, if we hold fast the confidence and rejoicing of the hope. Now I want to skip over up to the fourth chapter. About the 13th verse. It said, Neither. Is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do? Maybe I ought to back up to the first verse of that. Or maybe the twelfth verse. Where it says the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Bring in our Lord again. But he said, Sin then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. If I understand what this is talking about tonight, it's telling us that Jesus Christ was our high priest, and as he was our high priest, he was still tempted in all parts as we are today. Aren't you glad that we have a high priest, my friend, that when he was here in the world, that he took part of the same, that he suffered for you and I. Then he says, a little later on, let me get into the fifth chapter now. It said, For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. Notice he said, For every priest, not just one priest, but he was talking about all of them, my friend. He said, for every priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God that he might offer both gifts and sacrifices for sin who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way 
for that he himself also is compassed with infirmity, and by reason hereof he ought, as for the people, so also for himself to offer for sin, and no man take of this honor upon himself. Uh, you know, I used to use this to try to prove uh, that a minister is called to preach for the crane. Uh, but the main thought here is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ been called to be a high priest, such as was Aaron. Now in this, he said so, also Christ glorified not himself to be made a high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I forgotten thee. And he said also in another place, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. I want you to see something tonight, my friend, uh, that he was made after the order of Melchizedek. Uh, and there was a reason for that. Same way. He says, who, in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared, uh, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience uh, by the things uh, that he suffered and been made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation uh, to all them that obey him. All of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. You know, I preach Melchizedek several different ways, but I've been seeing something in it lately that I've never saw before. And I'm trying to get into that too. But notice in chapter 6, verse 17. I want you to keep this few verses in mind in particular, then we try to come back to it. He said, For in God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heir of promise the immutability of his counsel and confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible life, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. Have you ever heard it preached that it was possible for Christ to sin. I don't know, my friend, but it seems to me that if it was impossible for God to lie and if Jesus Christ was God manifested in the flesh, then he could not sin. Now let's skip down to chapter 7. It said for this, Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the most high God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of first then by interpretation, king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made life unto the Son of God, abided but priest continually. Now consider how great this man was, unto whom even the patriarch of Abraham gave the tenth of his fall. We find that this Melchizedek, he was a great priest, all right. We find that Abraham did give a tenth of all his fall to him. But as far as Melchizedek and what he represented and who he is, it's very little talk about it. Up to Hebrews. But then he said, for verily they are of the sons of Levi who received the office of the priesthood, having a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, that is of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. But he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promise. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. And here men that die receive tithes of their he receiveth them of whom it is witness that he liveth. And as I may so say, Levi also, who received tithe, paid tithe in Abraham, for he was yet in his loins of his father when Melchizedek met him, that if therefore perfection were by the political priesthood, for under the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should arrive after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Abraham? Now we find that Jesus Christ, when he came 
He was not called to be a high priest after the order of Aaron, but after the order of Melchizedek. But notice, he said, for the priesthood being changed, there is made of a necessity a change also of the law. For he of whom these things are spoken pertain to another tribe of which no man gave attendance at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. I want you to follow this real close. It is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning the priesthood. And it is yet far more evident for that after the senitude of Melchizedek there arises another priest. If I understand what this is talking about, it's not telling us that Melchizedek was the priest or Jesus Christ, but it says there arises another priest talking about Jesus Christ. Now he said, Who is made, not after the law of the carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life? We have a Christ, my friend, that has an endless life. Here is one that liveth forever. But he said, For he testified, the already priest forever, after the order of male tragedy. Now, later on in chapter 7, he said in verse 19, for the law made nothing perfect, but to bring in of a better hope be it, out of which we draw nigh unto God, and as much as not without an oath, he was made priest. For those priests were made without an oath, but this with an oath by him that said unto him, The Lord swear and will not repent, thou art a priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. So, by so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament, and they truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, because he continued ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Here we find that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, not only the high priest, but he is unchangeable. And his priesthood is unchangeable. But he says, Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uppermost that have come unto God by him, seeing he is ever liveth to make an intercession for them. For such an high priest becometh us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heaven, who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifices, first for his own sins and then for the people. For this he did once uh, when he offered up himself. Uh, so we find now that it's male, not male Kennedy, but, but the Son of God, Jesus Christ, my friends, uh, we find that he was both the sacrifice uh, and he was the one uh, that offered up the sacrifice. Uh, it took a priest, my friend, uh, to offer up a sacrifice for sin. But he says, For the law maketh men high priests which have affirmity, but the word of oath which was sent the law maketh the Son who is consecrated forevermore. Now, chapter 8. He says, Now, of the things which we have spoken, this is the Son. He kind of sum it up now. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heaven, a ministry of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord picked and not man. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Wherefore, it is of necessity that this man has somewhat also to offer. You know what I'm driving at tonight is that some, uh, it seemed to think uh, there's a difference between uh, the humanity of Christ uh, and the divinity of God. Uh, but I want you to be able to see tonight uh, there can't be separated. Just can't separate them. But he said for every high priest, we find it ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices wherefore it is a necessity that this man have somewhat to offer. We here it preached uh, that the Son of God offered a sacrifice. Uh, the man Christ was the sacrifice. But I want to tell you tonight uh, that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, He was both the offering, uh, He was the sacrifice, uh, and He was the offerer. Then He said, For if He were on earth, He should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve unto the example and shadow of heaven things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For he said, See, he that thou makest all things according to the pattern showed thee in the man. So what is he telling us? Well, if he were on earth. In other words, if he had been made high priest from a carnal commandment, Brother Crane, then he would not be a priest. He did not come out of the order 
came to the ninth chapter and closed this out. Verse 11 in the ninth chapter. But Christ, being come and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and of calves, but by his own blood he entered once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Notice what Christ did. He offered himself. He didn't offer it to you. He didn't offer it to me. But he offered it to God. And that was himself, without spot, without blemish, both priests, both sacrifice. He sent forth the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer, sprinkling the unclean sacrifice to the purifying of the flesh. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead work to serve the living God? Then in verse 10 of the 10th chapter, 11 and 12, he says, By the which we, we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering off time the same sacrifices which can never take away sin. But this man, notice who offered it. It said this man. After he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down in the right hand of God, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. Notice Christ just didn't become high priest after his resurrection. But Christ was always a high priest born the high priest, lived the high priest, died to sacrifice and rose, still our high priest. And I want to tell you tonight that this very one is still seated at the right hand of God, interceding for you and I, looking down and saying, the Father is for you to be, just as he did when he hung upon the cross of Calvary. This is the grace of Almighty God. Grace that has been bestowed upon you and I by the gift of God. Word of Sovereign Grace, a ministry of Paradise Primitive Baptist Church in Arlington, Texas. Paradise Primitive Baptist Church is located at 5300 Mansfield Road in Arlington, Texas. Services begin at 1030 each Sunday morning. Plan to come and worship with us. To find out more about Paradise Primitive Baptist Church, visit www.paradisepbc.org. Be sure to visit our website for articles, video, and audio sermons, as well as biblical answers to your questions. Thanks for watching, and be sure to join us again next week. May God richly bless you.